So I like to, uh, the reason I call this course the puzzle of painting is because to me that, that's the problem we've got. It, we, we've got the things we're looking at and, the, and we're trying to learn to see them. And then we've got this, our materials, which have their own set of limitations. And we're trying to take our materials and fit them in to what we see out in nature. And it's not a perfect fit. So it's a puzzle figuring out what to use where and understanding exactly how far you can go with your palette and your materials is real important because, as I said, you're trying to cram a whole world of light and, and form into this little tiny scale that we've got that represents our color. Um, this, is a, this chart is a color chart based on after images. We'll get into that a little bit later. But this is, a, uh, this is based on a Munn cell color system. And they have three descriptions of color. This is a system where they can describe color, a, a, a color in a series of letters and numbers so that somebody clear across the country knows exactly what that color is. It's not like you're going, well, it's raw sienna. Raw sienna could be all kinds of colors. But this way, it's a designer or whatever would know precisely what that color is. Liquitex used to put their color notations on their oils. They don't even do that any, they don't make oils, but um, it's a system, it's a pretty common system. And hue is just the name of the color. It's whether it's yellow, yellow, green, green, uh, blue, whatever. Then there's the value, that's the degree of light to dark, and chroma is the intensity of color, how, how bright it is versus how neutral. Now we'll cover these two in the days ahead, but today I want to talk about value because by far and away, compared to these other aspects of color, the three aspects we've got, value is the place where we have the most limitations. Uh, you know, in, in recent years, there's been a lot of new colors come on the market for artists to use, and, and uh, some of them are pretty bright. We've had, we've had uh, a lot of um, innovation in that area, I guess you could say. But with value, we're still working with the exact same limitation that the old masters had. There's not a darker dark, and there's not a whiter white. And so we're still trying to fit this value system into what we're seeing. And it's so, it's so incredibly limited compared to what nature's got to work with. Uh, our lightest light will not, that isn't going to give you a sunburn like the sun will. It's not going to reflect into another object like a highlight will. It's, uh, it's not even close to being as light as, as nature can get. And, and on the other end of it, because this has light hitting it, there's light hitting that black, that can't be as dark as something that's actually a hole. If you had a box that was lined with black velvet and a hole in it, that hole would be much darker than this black uh, right there. So. Um, we are trying, it's like nature has a, has a value scale that, that stretches a mile. And we've got this little tiny one. And that's why simplifying your values is the most important thing you're, you're going to do in terms of uh, creating a realistic image. And um, there's nothing that's going to help improve your work more than getting this part down. It's something that you can always improve on, and it's not something that you, just applies to still life. The lessons in this class will help your trees look more realistic, portraits, whatever it is you're working on are going to, it, it'll improve any, any subject matter because we're still, we're working with the exact same problem you have in any genre. It's, it's the simplifying of the values. Um, the, other, the other aspect we're going to cover today is shape. So value and shape, that's, that's the two 
lessons today of, of how to see in a more, in a way that um, artists are more familiar with. And so when we get into the, 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 because this aspect of color is so limited, we actually can use hue um, as a way to compensate for our lack of values. And we'll get into that more tomorrow. One of the ways that I get around seeing what I think is there, like the way I would get around this image of a pear and see, see the actual thing, the shapes that are up there, is by not looking at the pear. One of the most effective things you can do in, in learning to see shapes correctly is to look at the ones that don't have a, um, you don't have a strong symbol for in your mind. Um, an example of that would be a negative shape. One of the most obvious examples would be. Uh, another example would be um, something that's, uh, well, like these, these, uh, these are some portraits I did in a sketch group. These are all done from life. And the, the shape I started with in these was the forehead. The forehead and the hair around it. And in all of these, I started the exact same way. And the reason for that is that my, my brain doesn't have a symbol for what a forehead shape is. So I can get it more correctly. If you go for an eye, or the lips, or something like that. Everybody has an image in their head already of what an eye or, a, or lips look like. And so, just like with that pair on my sweater, you're wanting to put down this shape that your brain thinks is there instead of what's actually there. My brain doesn't have a preconceived idea of what this forehead is. So I'm more apt to get it right then once you get something on there that's correct, you're relating to that shape, and it makes everything else easier to get, get on there more correctly. Okay, so this one is just broken down into three notes of paint. We've got a light, half tone, and shadow. And again, nothing on this side is as dark as anything over there. I don't care if there's a brown spot on this pair. Leave it off if you have to. You don't want to you don't want to break up this this big pattern of light and shade unless you absolutely have to. Um, nothing over here is as light as anything over here. If you don't make any more of a statement than that, that's fine. If you if if you can make three notes that that read like light and shade, that's okay, that's fine. Here's one where it's broken down into more values. I've got the light side's got four different values. I've got a highlight, a little bit more form, the half tone right there, the shadow side. Here I've got a little note of a reflected light, light coming back in. But still, this value isn't as light as even the half tone. It's not as light as anything that's over here. I've broken down all kinds of colors. You know, I've made a whole bunch of different color changes, maybe, you know, 20 on one side, and I don't know how many. You know, you can break it down as much or as little as you want, but what you've got to do is keep the value range the same. You've got to hang on to this value range uh, where all of this has to stay lighter than anything over there. Everything over here needs to stay darker than everything over here. This is what you don't want to do. You don't want to look at this and go, oh, I see a brown spot. Oh, I see that. Oh, that looks a little darker there. And, oh, that looks lighter over there, and that's really blue. And you just randomly jump around noting every little thing as though you were an ant crawling across this pear. You're not looking at the big picture. And so this is going to destroy your light and shade. It's not going to look like something you want to eat. It's it not even going to necessarily read like a pear. So... You can't, you can't just go around, you can't go through the canvas 
just noting every single little difference you see without relating it to the thing as a whole and hope to have any light and shade. We just do not have the equipment. We don't have the value range in our paints to pull that off. So you've got to decide what the most important thing is. For me, the most important thing is the big picture of light and shade and the form. And that's what I use my values up on. My name is Laura Robb and I've been a professional artist for over 40 years. I first began taking art classes in Tulsa, Oklahoma while still in high school and later moved to New York City to study art. My work has been featured a number of times over the years in publications such as Art of the West, The Artist Magazine, and Southwest Art to name a few. For nearly 40 years, I have continuously been exhibiting my paintings in galleries, museums, and national shows. My teaching career spans several decades, and in this online course, I will show you the methods that experience has taught me work well to get information across to students. When conducting a workshop, I have two main goals. One is to help the students sharpen their ability to observe from an artist's point of view something we are all continuously trying to improve on. These seeing skills are essential to every aspect of painting, from the relationships of values, color, shapes, and edges, to composition and creating a center of interest. My other goal is to show the students the ways I push the boundaries of what my materials are capable of in order to create a convincing feeling of light, form, and depth in my paintings. The demonstrations will be still life studies in oil, but most of the theories and lessons will apply to any medium or subject matter. Hope to see you in my course.